There are two main techniques used to apply non-invasive stimulation to treat non-invasive uh, the brain stimulation to treat no motor symptoms. Actually, the transcranial magnetic stimulation is you place a kind of coil into the brain region that you think that's best to, to, to change brain activity and improve no motor symptoms. And on the other hand, there's, a, there's another type of simulation that's called TDCS or transcranial direct simulation. And actually, both techniques have been applied to treat no motor symptoms in PD, in Parkinson's disease, over the last maybe six or seven years. And there are few clinical trials, but well designed to, to use TDCS over the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex to treat no motor symptoms, especially cognitive impairments. So it's, they are randomized clinical trials that there's a kind of active simulation against the sham simulation or placebo simulation. And they, they found that after active simulation, the patients improved mainly the, 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 the frontal symptoms, for example, the attention or the reaction time and the executive function and compared to the sham simulation. So there's still, you know, few patients included among these studies, but overall they, they showed a, a, a trending to, to improve the normal or symptoms, mainly cognitive uh, symptoms. And still under the umbrella of no motor symptoms, there, there are few papers that analyze the effect of TDCS and TMS over depression. And here, TMS, uh, the, the evidence is, is most robust for TMS, as actually for patients without PD, those with Parkinson's disease also improved after active simulation. So it's uh, actually, if you classify the level of evidence as level B, so it's probably effective to treat depression using TMS. And here again, we are at the same target, the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex in the left side of the brain. There are many more data for motor symptoms than mo no motor symptoms in, in Parkinson's disease. And overall, the outcome measure is the UPDRS part three. That's a, a motor scale that you can evaluate the tremor and bradykinesia and rigidity and axial symptoms and gait. And, and overall, the studies showed that, yes, you can improve these symptoms. And the most symptoms usually affected by simulation is the rigidity and the bradykinesia, but mainly the bradykinesia, the, the gait speed. And, and the, the patient report was that usually, the, you know, that, you know, is standing and the velocity of the gait is affected or is improved after simulation. On the other hand, usually the framework is not affected by stimulation and the rigidity is less affected as well. And looking into the, 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 the audit studies so far, uh, although there is a kind of improvement <coughs> comparing the active against the sham stimulation, the effect size is too low. So there is an improvement on the, the UPDR as part three, but these effects is too low. And our question is how can we improve our stimulation of these patients, the protocol or the, the selection of the patients, the number of the sessions and so forth. So this is the, the future perspectives here in this field.